Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Owen Conlon. Uh, I'm a professor of computer science in Trinity College. Um, I am the director of postgraduate teaching and learning in the School of Computer Science and Statistics. Today's session is broken down into a few different parts. Uh, so initially I'll give a very brief overview of the programs we offer in the school. Uh, then we'll have a couple of uh, short introductory videos uh, to give a sense of study at Trinity College uh, and also give an overview of, you see it there on slide E3, what is this uh, very important E3 initiative uh, that is bringing together some very um, telling research in engineering, environment and emerging technologies and gives a very strong context for a lot of the studies at Trinity College because here when we bring these uh, areas together we can tackle some of the world's really significant challenges. Um, so Melanie if you can move on to the next slide please. So here we see an outline of programs across the three schools, which are the constituent schools in E3. So obviously today we're focused on the left-hand side, the School of Computer Science and Statistics, but we have very uh, interesting programs in engineering and natural sciences. And while today we're not necessarily focused on those, I think it's important to recognize that when you come to Trinity College, you have an opportunity to engage with researchers from a very wide range of different disciplines and other students who are engaging in those disciplines. And it's that mix which I think helps our graduates form really holistic perspectives. And for me, that's a very important thing. If we focus on the left-hand side and, and look at that purple box, uh, we can see a number of different programs that we offer. Um, our flagship offering is the MSc in Computer Science. Uh, it's broken down into four strands, uh, which is augmented and virtual reality, data science, intelligent systems, and future networked uh, systems. And for us, these are really important areas to um, develop talented uh, new graduates in, but they're backed up by our excellence in research. Um, Trinity College is, is a very well-ranking university and the School of Computer Science and Statistics is ranked in the top 50 in the world. You know, so we are producing excellent research and we bring that research, particularly at master's level, into our teaching to ensure that you're exiting our programs um, with excellent skills, but also the most up-to-date thinking and also a perspective on how to perform research. Uh, and that's why the um, research dissertation is such a core component of the offering that we make. We also have an MSc in interactive and digital media, uh, which is a, a hothouse for interdisciplinary work. Um, and it is really, really a exciting program. And then we also have a postgraduate certificate in statistics, which I don't think any of us are necessarily talking about today, but it's important to see the title of the school there, the School of Computer Science and statistics. This is a, a combination that came together about 10 years ago and it's been very, very significant as we've seen the rise and importance in, in machine learning and data science and no matter which facet of the school you enter into you'll be exposed to these various different things. So we're very lucky to have talented researchers in computer science and statistics and, and where those two areas come together. So I think what we'll do is we'll proceed now with uh, two short videos, which give you an overview uh, of uh, study at Trinity and an overview of E3. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to uh, four very interesting and exciting panelists who have a very direct experience of having engaged uh, with this program, having we worked with graduates from Trinity College, helping to develop the graduate skills. Um, because we, what we very much see is that coming to Trinity is a launch pad for your career. It's helping to set you up for whatever the next phase of, of your life is and, and how you want to see, you know, you perform some really interesting work based on this. Um, so, uh, Melanie, if it's okay, we might proceed to the videos, please. 
Good morning. I'm delighted to welcome you to Trinity. My name is Juliette Hussey, and I'm the current Vice President for Global Relations here in Trinity. Let me start by saying a few words about Trinity, and then I'll say a few words about the exciting area of E3. Trinity is a 400 year history of excellence in teaching and research. Trinity is the highest ranking university in Ireland and a member of the League of European Research Universities. Research is fundamental to all that we do and research-led research teaching is very much part of our identity. Our research is multidisciplinary and much of the focus of our research is aimed at the great global challenges that we all face, such as climate change, sustainability, infection and immunology, ageing. Trinity is a comprehensive university composed of three faculties and 24 schools. Trinity is recognised as an international university and this year we were delighted to be ranked eighth in the world and first in Europe in terms of internationalisation. We have a diverse student body with almost 30% of our students coming from outside of Ireland. And these students come from over 120 countries around the world. And so the classroom experience is very rich in terms of diversity. The opportunity to learn alongside and from students with different perspectives leads to great discussions and in-depth learning in the classroom and beyond. Much of the student activity in Trinity is focused on engagement in, cl in clubs and society. And so there's a long tradition of learning both inside and outside the classroom. E3 is the name we have given to engineering, environment and emerging technologies. The focus of teaching and research in E3 is directed towards finding balanced solutions for a better world, recognising the need for technology to be delivered and developed in symbiosis with the natural world, allowing a more sustainable future for all. This event today will provide information on many of the postgraduate programmes delivered in the schools of engineering, natural sciences and computer science and statistics. I hope you find the, the event engaging. I hope it may encourage you to apply to do postgraduate study in Trinity. Thank you. an obligation as a third level research institution to respond to what are the social, climatic, environmental, um, energy crises in which the world finds itself. Human activity is causing catastrophic changes in our planet and the real big tipping point is about 2050. So the graduates that come out of Trinity in the next five years are the people that will have to contribute to the solutions to these problems and we're going to do it through E3. E3 is a multidisciplinary program and multidisciplinary programs are greater than the sum of their parts. The E3 project is taking students beyond the traditional area of science of discovery and moving us towards the science of engagement and collaboration. E3 stands for a merging of environmental science, engineering, and computer science and statistics. It's a conceptual, philosophical transformation of the way in which science is taught in Trinity at the moment. Our graduates will be entering a rapidly changing uh, world, socially and environmentally. And the E3 program will build a diverse set of transferable skills that will enable them not just to contribute, but to lead by example. And that opens up enormous opportunities for generating innovations and also for tackling those complex problems that help us to transition to becoming a much more sustainable society. It is by far the biggest higher education project in Ireland. The model of what we're doing, if we get it right, uh, will be an example to other universities around the world. So I think it's, it's a massive opportunity and it's up to all of us within the E3 family, but also the leadership of the university now and in the future to, to make the most of that. E3 can be a real driver for change in society. I think the graduates that will come out of the E3 Learning Foundry will be much more attuned to the ways in which their skills and training will be able to address 
the challenges the world faces, climate change, sustainability challenges, and, and many others. And I think it's a very exciting time. E3 is the future. That's it. It's um, an optimistic and inquisitive um, interaction with the future. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks for queuing those videos up. So uh, we have received many uh, very interesting questions from people who are joining the, the uh, webinar today. Uh, we took those pre-submissions and we've tried to uh, bring them all together to ask those questions of our panel. Um, so I'd ask the panelists to please uh, turn on their cameras. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll introduce the panel as, as they're doing that. Um, so I'm very pleased that we have uh, people with direct student experience here. We have Pragya Madan, who is a current student in the MSc in Computer Science. Uh, we have Rohan Gupta, who I think graduated last year uh, from the programme. Um, and I think they will be able to speak directly to the experience you know, they're currently having, the experience they had. And that'll give hopefully a good insight into what the opportunity at Trinity offers to you as a prospective student. Uh, we also have uh, Mariel Kelly from Trinity's Career Advisory Service, because as I mentioned earlier, we see very much this as a springboard, a launch point for your career, and Trinity has full supports to ensure that you can make the most of that opportunity and take the learning and development that you have as part of Trinity and bring it into your career development. And then I'm delighted to have uh, Dr. Tony O'Donnell here. Uh, Tony is a graduate of Trinity College, and he's also the VP of Engineering at Shutterstock, because as I say, you know, this is part of a career path and hearing from somebody who is an active employer uh, in the Dublin area and who is very invested in cutting edge uh, technologies, we get to hear what kind of things he's looking for in, in graduates. And that gives you a sense of that connectedness of how this MSE is part of, of your own development. So I'm going to go to uh, Pragya first. And uh, Pragya, the question I'd like to start with is, can you tell us a, about the program that you're currently studying and tell us you know about the experience you're, you're having uh, with Trinity College Dublin please. Thanks Professor Owen. So uh, I am currently st uh, studying Masters in Computer Science specialization of future network systems at Trinity College Dublin. I joined uh, in last September when the Covid outbreak was already there so I'm still uh, working remotely from India because uh, there had been a very limited uh, on uh, like on uh, live classes, otherwise there are almost everything uh, through remote learning. And uh, the experience that I had uh, since last September till now has been amazing uh, because first, uh, we did not even realize that we are in a COVID scenario. We had a lot of work to do and we actually enjoyed doing it. And that's the best part. We were always consumed uh, learning new technologies and uh, you know, uh, working on group projects from people around the world. Although it was challenging at times, but in general, we had learned a lot. So from working on group projects to working on individual projects, assignments, even this, giving a lesson uh, to a class of around 30 to 40 people as a part of our assignment and uh, writing a research paper, choosing our own areas for dissertation and studying uh, around six modules per semester and uh, the program which is uh, divided into three parts with uh, first semester being three months, second semester three months and the third semester for dissertation. It is surely a fast paced course, but uh, all in all, it makes us learn a lot more and uh, like ensure that we are almost every time at the highest productivity levels that we can be. So the experience is quite good and uh, overall about the communication, I uh, want to mention one thing that all the professors, course coordinator, course director and even you, you have been uh, so reachable all the time because uh, me being a class representative, uh, representative and being a GSU member, we have reached out uh, to everyone for a few things that we were facing challenges for and everyone was so helpful. And it feels like everyone is just an email away all the time. That's the best part of it. Thank you. It's lovely to hear that experience. I, I think that's an important point to mention is that for us, students are not just people who drift in for a year and then, you know, you know we, we deliver education to. I think that's the wrong way to think about it. Our students are very much people we work with. 
um, because yeah. we expect that through your studies that you're going to develop um, some you know research insights that that help develop our thinking so it's it's obviously you're learning but you're, you're helping us to develop new ideas so i might move and ask um why did you choose trinity college in particular um to study this the a master's in computer science yeah so uh like i was Usually I'm aspirant from, uh, for studying uh, internationally, like since I completed my school education. So I was actually looking for options for bachelors as well. And at that time I got to know about Trinity because uh, I got an admission in Thapar Institute at India, which offers a two plus two collaboration with Trinity College Dublin. At that moment, I could not uh, come to Trinity, but uh, in the meantime, I was actually uh, connected with many seniors from Thapar who were pursuing two plus two course from Trinity and even my batchmates who joined in that course. So I was in touch with them all the time. And I also looked at some other universities, but there were things that stood out for Trinity. Firstly, it's a one year course of master's degree. So usually many universities uh, give two years time for similar kind of course but uh, they are mostly research-based rather than taught masters. And I feel that the directions that Trinity is giving us to do that research is uh, very unique as compared to um, doing whole research for two years by your own self. So the ta uh, taught modules which tell us about distributed systems, scalable computing, urban computing, these are the subjects which stand out, especially about the urban computing module so it is one of a kind module which uh, which is not taught in many universities uh, who offer such a master's program and it uh, has very little research done over the years and still uh, the way trinity teaches us that module it uh, develops a research interest in that area as well also there's a flexibility of courses being offered at trinity so, uh, for example, my strand is Future Network Systems strand, which is not a, a usual deep learning uh, kind of strand. And I had that uh, like thing that I want to work more on the deep learning and machine learning side as well, and I want to explore. So I chose my dissertation in that area, and there were uh, no complications in choosing a dissertation in deep learning area while I was working on the networking side of things. So that's the kind of flexibility Trinity was going to offer me. And that was the only reason I chose Trinity. I think it was my single uh, choice because I was working before I joined Trinity. And uh, like my uh, job continued till 25th of September last year. And I joined Trinity on 28th of September. That was the switch that I made so fastly because I applied to Trinity sometime in June. I was already late. But everyone was so uh, helpful that I reached out to the professors and asked if I can still get an admission. And there were some rolling basis admissions going on. So I got an offer and then I walked into Trinity. That's great. It's, it's great to hear that it's, it's part of your journey. Um, for, for me, I think the options students have available allow that kind of a la carte picking of the things that make sense to you to tune your studies in an area that, that really resonates with your interests. And I think what you say there around the dissertation work, which, as you indicated, is, is about a, um, a third of the programme. Um, you know, you're, you're working deeply with somebody with deep research expertise, but that allows you to tune into an area of your interest. So, you know, with that deep learning interest, you could find somebody who would support that, find and help guide you through some of the research and hopefully produce something that, that that's, you know, really, really interesting. Uh, so, so that's good. Can you tell me a little bit of what your typical day is like? I think we have to obviously recognizing that all of our typical days are a little bit different given, you know, where we're sitting and, and what we're doing at the moment. Uh, but what's, what's your typical day of study like um, in this program? So it's like around four to five hours of lectures, two to three hours of group calls on a group project, and uh, then two to three hours of individual coursework. And, uh, you know, on a weekly basis, around four to five hours working on the dissertation thing as well. Because although the dissertation starts at the uh, third semester, but uh, the uh, like supervisors are squ uh, quite helpful. They are uh, available on a weekly basis and we have a weekly catch-up call in which we can ask queries and we can discuss more on the project. So uh, this is what a typical day looks like. I'm, I think it's almost completely packed with uh, different modules because not all the time we are working on just one aspect of things. At uh, some time we are working on distributed systems, other time urban computing. All, although they are linked together, 
but uh, we are able to see those links only when we study all those modules uh, in a day or you know two or three modules uh, changing quickly so that's how we are able to see the links between the modules yeah it's, i mean it's, it's obviously a very busy schedule to take a, a master's program and complete it in a year um it's good to hear that that you engage with your dissertation supervisor throughout uh, and for me that's that's one of the important aspects is that students who work with us you know it, it's it's not like they kind of start in the summer working and thinking about the research they start from october you know thinking about the topic developing their interest you know doing some literature analysis and then starting to figure out what what they want to work on and can you tell me obviously we all live in challenging times what has been the biggest challenge uh, you've faced in engaging with the program uh, i think it's the pace of the course because it's already a one year's course and uh, we are learning so much throughout and it's not just the pace actually uh, looking at the other side of it it's a uh, the uh, wish or aspiration to deep dive into everything that we are learning so there is a lot to learn and uh, you know everything that's being taught to us or given direction to us we actually want to deep dive more into it but then we have something else to move on to so that's the thing which is uh, being challenging because some of the modules are so interesting that we want to actually learn more and more about it but we don't really have the time to go further in that so yeah. that's the thing on top of it uh, the uh, remote working because i have a five and a half hours time zone difference in winters and now it's four and a half hours so i think the covid scenarios are also a little bit challenging but because everyone has been so reachable and trinity being such a good community because even if we don't talk to almost everyone in the class uh, people can still reach out to anybody like whenever required and that's the best part of it because it feels like an engaging community even when we are uh, working throughout the covid scenarios and haven't met each other i think that's a good point i mean i i, I think what the program offers is uh, it opens up your capability to deep dive into a whole set of topics and you'll deep dive into those over the next coming years as you develop your career um and i think more fundamentally also exposes you to the process to examining complex topics so when you encounter a topic you haven't uh, studied before you know you, you've you've developed that skill set which is not something that's very easy to put on a cv it's that yeah. mode of inquiry that inquisitiveness that i think is is nurtured i, I think you've spoken quite well to kind of your your experience of of trying to learn in the current pandemic um but what i'd like to ask you maybe is is maybe not not just in that context but what tips would you have for incoming students i think it's uh, be a good communicator because that's what has really helped me out that people have to take their own initiative so for example at the moment then uh, when i thought of joining a masters degree it was already late but i still uh, did not uh, take a back step i actually reached out to people i got to know how how are the process is going on what do i need to do at the moment and then everyone was so helpful because you have to take your own initiatives to drive what you want to do so that's uh, the biggest point uh, that i want to uh, let them know also at the same time uh, you have to be comfortable and positive around everything as you mentioned professor that uh, that it makes you good researcher trinity makes you a good researcher and they help you be comfortable with the new concepts and that's what is uh, it is doing to us like all the time now we are facing every new thing so from uh, for example we started in first semester and we did not know more most of the things still we were actually positive about learning all those things together even if we don't know by ourselves we reached out to our batch mates we helped each other and we got through it and now we are so confident about uh, you know facing some new kind of technological uh, aspects uh, which we don't even know uh, from the beginning and when you start uh, doing those things on your own you will actually find the links there's a strong linkage about everything and how things scale up so that's uh, one of the biggest things I, i would say to the incoming cohort that be positive have a good mindset positive attitude be confident and have a, a vision for what you want to do so about the opportunities trinity and dublin has a lot of opportunities now it has to be you who wants to drive your career to some or the other aspect of it because there's um, never a lack of opportunities there's a lack of vision at times i think there's some really nice tips in there i i hear the words uh, vision openness positivity and communication 
Uh, I think in life, actually, they're, they're quite good lessons. Um, but to take them into your studies and carry them forward, I think, is very much that. You, you Seeing this as not a kind of a, a small sandbox of I go, I do a master's and I'm complete. Now, none of us are ever complete. You know, we're always learning and developing and growing. And uh, it sounds like you're having a great experience. So uh, I'm going to move and I'm going to talk to Rohan, um, if that's OK. So, uh, Pragya, thank you very much. But I'll, I will return to you. I think I have more questions for you. Um, so, Rohan, if I might ask just a kind of broad question. Um, why did you study a, a master's in computer science? At Professor Connell, at the outset, I would like to thank the alumni relations office and the E3 team to have me here, share my thoughts. Uh, I did not have a formal degree in computer science prior to this. So I, I had a very specific set of, while I was working closely with technology, I had a very specific set of learning outcomes that I had in mind while looking for a master's in computer science. So on the conceptual side, I was looking for, you know, an ability to operate across the layers of abstractions across the entire computing stack from, you know, hardware primitives to functional kernels. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, also the ability to traverse across the hierarchy, you know, with necessary mathematics and algorithms to applications would deal with business logic. Uh, and on the, on the other side, I also wanted to gather, you know, best practices, uh, best practices in terms of, uh, you know, optimizing large scale computing architectures, how to bring in the uh, robust design standards, and also the ability to tinker with uh, open source tools, you know, identify the right complementary set and, you know, create an, create an effective uh, ensemble that can be used realistically in a stack. So, uh, uh, so those were the, uh, things that I had in mind uh, while looking for a course in MS. No, that's, that's, that's a good answer. And I, I like that um, you know, focused perspective where you see where the various different elements layer in on top of each other to you know, help take your knowledge and, and you know, make it that little bit more complete to start addressing the, the next challenges. Uh, so th that gives a good idea of why computer science or why a master's in computer science and why specifically Trinity College? What, what drew you to Trinity? So apart from uh, apart from being one of the top CS programs in Europe and across uh, the world, uh, as Pragya, I would just reiterate the flexibility to uh, choose electives of their choice. Uh, a very balanced pedagogy, you know, a fairly interactive classrooms, hands-on labs, and a very rigorous research work as part of the coursework. And uh, uh, as a, as a professional, uh, uh, this was my second postgraduate degree. And uh, the the uh, and when I'm taking a break from work, you know, one year compact program at a university uh, with 400 years of you know enriching history of with research and literary contributions, it couldn't have been better. And uh, my my decision to my my confidence in taking this decision to join Trinity was also enhanced by a very very generous financial aid. So I received uh, the Government of Ireland scholarship, and I was privileged. Uh, so this was supported by the Higher Education Authority and Trinity College in association, and it supported my entire tuition and living expense, so which meant that as a student, I could really focus on what matters. And, uh, uh, and also apart from choosing uh, the university, I, I guess it is also sometimes about the city and the country because the experience also matters. Uh, so uh, Dublin is like the technology hub of Europe and with all of the fan companies, Google's, Facebook's, all adjacent to the Trinity campus, you have the experts coming in to the classrooms, very nicely industry uh, uh, curated uh, uh, lectures in the classes. Uh, and so and in terms of choosing the country, you know, uh, uh, lonely, we, I can only endorse the Lonely Planets ranking of Ireland being the most, uh, you know, friendliest country in the world. So uh, uh, it's a lovely place to spend a year of your time. Uh, that's that's lovely to hear. I mean, um, Dublin is a modern city. It's a busy city, but it's interesting. It's a city that fits in your head. And I, I know that sounds a bit strange to say, but but when people come to Dublin, it doesn't take too long to figure out you know what's where and how to get engaged. And and it's nice to hear that that you found it to be a friendly place because that that very much is what we hear from students who come to Ireland and come to Dublin. Um, so. Can you tell me a little bit, what, what was it like to study at Trinity? So we've got a sense of, of Ireland and Dublin there, but Trinity itself, and obviously you had kind of a, a very interesting year uh, last year where, where you know, there was this big event that happened um, early in, in 2020 that, that was right in the middle of your studies. 
Um, so can you tell me a little bit around your experience um, before and, and probably through that transition and after COVID-19 became the, the global event that it is? Sure, sure. So at the, at the beginning, you know, I would like to begin by saying that the very joy of, you know, studying at a beautiful campus like Trinity, uh, you know, having classrooms in a building which is dedicated to Hamiltonian mathematics, uh, you know, the very environment is inspiring. Uh, uh, and uh, when the COVID struck us all in March, uh, uh, it was almost a week's time within which the university had to take a call if, you know, if things needed to be in physical presence or it had to be under a lockdown. And uh, we received a very, very proactive and clear communication uh, uh, and assurance that, you know, the university is with the students in all forms. And uh, uh, while and as an international student, all of my friends and the classmates had to take a call whether to, you know, leave their hostels out, travel back to the home, you know. So the university meant an extra mile to ensure that people went out uh, to the tune of talking to the embassies and the Ministry of Housing to ensure that, you know, housing related issues are all sorted. Uh, the uh, student union was also very proactive. Uh, and uh, I'd also highlight that uh, once the course turned remote, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the classroom and environment did not change, you know. It took a couple of weeks for everyone to settle down, but, you know, the, it, the rigor still remained the same. So the three-month uh, dissertation that we worked on, uh, uh, fortunately, we could publish that out. So me, along with my advisor, we could present it at an IEEE conference in the States. Uh, uh, this only tells us that you know the advisor was in a very consistent touch with me uh, all through. So I can endorse for the highest standards of academic freedom and you know constructive critique, uh, which allows us to build the critical thinking uh, which is needed at the end of a graduate program like this. Uh, the faculty members are also, you know, subject experts in their domains, uh, while being a very approachable set of people, as Pragya mentioned. Uh, so, uh, so the feeling that you are in right hands uh, is also, you know, blissful. No, that, that's that's good to hear. Um, obviously, the COVID nineteen um, was a very complicated situation for everyone to try and deal with, uh, and communication. Going back to a point that Pragya made communication was key to try and ensure that we were first and foremost meeting our, our health and safety obligations for everybody. I mean, the safety was, was our paramount uh, desire. But on top of that, to try and ensure that the people continue to have a, a successful and fruitful learning experience. And that's something we continue to pay very close attention to. Um, the university has introduced a large range of health and safety measures uh, to ensure that when the opportunity to return physically is there, that it will happen. Uh, and we are optimistic that come September that there will be uh, increased ability to have physical and face-to-face -face contact. And um, that's projected on, on a good rollout of uh, vaccines within Ireland. And, you know, I think also a year's experience of, of understanding the situation. Um, so our, our, our fervent desire is that we'll see students back to campus in September. But of course, we have to pay attention to national restrictions, to an ongoing situation. It's complicated, but it's heartening to hear that Pragya and Rohan have had good remote experiences, you know, and still had that engagement uh, with our staff members to ensure that you know you're developing your skills and and getting the most out of uh, out of you know working with with these folks. Um, so what I might do is I might move on and pass some questions of uh, Mariel uh, next. Um, Mariel, so what supports does Trinity's Career Advisory Service? And provide to both current and past students? Hi, Owen. Yeah, so we, we provide a lot of different um, supports. And I'd say, you know, at this point, I've probably worked with hundreds of uh, masters in computer science students. Um, and really what I find is, you know, and, and we've been talking about it already today, the students are fantastic. They make my job so easy in a lot of ways, because, you know, whether they have lots of experience and they're kind of redirecting or going up or have no experience, you know, they're, they're brilliant, they're engaged, they're great communicators, they're motivated. So my job is lovely in a lot of ways working with this with this group. The thing that I find they need support with, which is what everyone needs support with, is, is job applications. Um, I've, I've been in Trinity eight years. I've been a careers advisor for longer than that. I've never met anybody who says, God, I love applying for jobs, love writing my CV. You know, it, it, it's horrible and it's stressful. So that's my job. And, and I guess, you know, even what you said there about it's difficult sometimes to put what you offer into a CV. So my job is to kind of sit with people and say, what's your story? What have you got to offer? What makes you different? And how do we get that across to employers? 
because that that's the, the only time really where I see students taking a bit longer to get a job out of these courses is where they, they haven't got that learning. So we've got loads of stuff online, you know, lots of information, especially for international students. The expectations are a bit different. CVs, cover letters, interviews, just cultural stuff. So we've, we've loads of information about that. And then I meet students one to one throughout the year, you know, to kind of talk about their aspirations, where they want to go, help them with applications. We have drop in CV clinics every week. So you can get your, your CV, you can get your LinkedIn profile, which is really important, reviewed. We do practice interviews. We have online video software. So we have all these kind of really practical supports. Um, my, my biggest challenge sometimes with this cohort is they're so enthusiastic. I have to tell them to calm down on the job search because what often happens is they get here and they're so enthusiastic that they start applying for jobs right away and then they get job offers right away. And I have to be like, you can't actually start because you have to do your course. Um, so that's, that's always a, an interesting one. Um, in terms of what supports we do, um, like those supports go on afterwards as well. But I, I rarely would see students after they finish their course because they've got jobs and they're flying, to be honest with you. Yeah. The, the one time I would like, so this year I've seen a few because it's just taken that little bit longer. Um, but again, I'm seeing students, it's taken them longer, but last year's group are starting now, those who were in place to, to actually get jobs. Um, or people who say, do you know what, I'm not happy in my job that I got, how do I, how do I kind of move? So, so those would be the, when I'd see them afterwards. The other stuff we do is obviously, you know, employer engagement. So as soon as students arrive, pretty much, we have two really big fairs. We have a computer and technology fair and an engineering and science fair. So straight away, we get students in front of, in front of employers understanding what they want, what the opportunities are, and then that happens all throughout the year. Um, the other thing that's important is the alumni kind of networking. So we in the service work with our alumni office and we have a mentoring program. Um, and this is something we really strongly recommend to all our students, especially international students, but all students. That network is so important, you know, in terms of getting inside information on companies, you know, referrals, which is, is a really big thing. You know, Pragya spoke there about community. And I think that's, that's a really big part of, the, of this course. And it's something that I've, I've really seen over the years, you know, Everyone is, is in the same boat. You know, you're, you're, you're here, you're, you're really passionate, you're trying to get a job in your area and it can be challenging to understand how you navigate that. I have found the alumni from this course to be fantastic. They're so engaged. Um, you know, I bring alumni back in to talk to current students and tell their stories and they're always so happy to be contacted. So, you know, I can facilitate that as well. You know, if I have students going, I want to work in X and I can say, oh, I, I met this person from the course. So there's, it, it's really about facilitating connection is, is a lot of what we do. Yeah, I think that's that's really important because, as I said, th this is a springboard onto a career and it's you know, a complicated thing to navigate a career and, and having that connection to obviously your skills and experience and, and as well act, tapping into alumni and, and how they've experienced their career, I think help get that little bit of mentorship, that little bit of steer, um, because it's, I'm really glad to say that our graduates are very much sought after. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's a, a huge number of employers, both in the Dublin area, but also internationally, who want people with, with the skills that, that you guys have. Um, so I suppose on that, what kind of employment do our graduates go on to take up? Yeah, well, it, I suppose it really depends. Um, you know, obviously we're talking about a lot of different streams. Um, so people would go into, you know, things that are, are relevant to their streams or not, depending on, on, on what they kind of want to do. So, you know, you're talking a lot about research. We'd see loads of people go into kind of research roles in industry or in, in academia. So, you know, research and development engineer, ML engineer, AI engineer, computer vision researcher, you know, those kind of, you know, research roles. And then stuff around, you know, data science, data analyst, risk analyst, DevOps, you know, so really across the board, game development, you know, so people go into everything and obviously software as well. Um, and I think the thing that's important is that, you know, our students go into huge, you know, big name companies that everyone's heard of, but they also go into these really exciting, you know, startups and SMEs. You know, we're talking about Ireland being, you know, a capital in Europe for technology. And, you know, in, in terms of talking, again, what Pragya was saying about having, you know, that kind of that vision, it's really, really easy to get a job in software development in Ireland in a lot of ways. Um, so, so really what, what the challenge is, is for students to stay focused on what they really want. Because what I will hear from students is all these employers are contacting me on LinkedIn. They want me to go into, into software. And so it's, it's having that confidence to kind of go, you know, if this is what you want, fantastic. Um, and, you know, people go in and they get great salaries. But it's, if, you're, if you're really keen on a particular area, which people are, because you're, you're, you're delving into it when you come here, having the confidence to take that little bit longer with the job search, not jump on the first thing that you see and really going, you know, fighting to go into the area that, that you that you want to. Yeah, I think that's that's been my experience with students at various levels, whether they're our, mm. our 
our undergraduate students, our master's students, or our PhD students, that they will have a number of offers. Um, and it's by taking the time to really have that vision, as Pragya said, to know where they want to go and, and assess the offers based on that. So um, I think we're hearing that we have very attractive graduates, which is great. So I'm going to move on to Tony, if that's okay, Mario. And um, Tony, I might get you to give me a little bit of a background around uh, Shutterstock. Yeah, so we are one of the world's biggest digital asset marketplaces. So we've got 400 million uh, digital assets, be they music tracks, videos or images. Um, and we support the world's marketers and uh, media companies um, when it comes to sharing their message and also when it comes to things like um, breaking news. So, for example, royal photography is a big part of what we do. And if you were watching your breaking news in the last hour or so, you'd have seen the sad news about Prince Philip. Um, and we would have one of the most amazing archives, I guess, of Prince Philip's life that we will now be sharing with the world. So you, you would see us in newspapers and, and magazines um, sharing that type of editorial photography and then also pretty much um, every marketing campaign or, or um, advertising campaign you'd see. Uh, we've probably contributed assets and we're also very active in the movie making side of things. So since I joined Shutterstock, every time I watch my favorite TV shows or I watch a, an MCU movie, I'm watching to the end of the credits to see Shutterstock referenced because we've supplied some of the digital assets that created that experience. Oh, wow. That's, that's a pretty amazing and a very broad reach. Um, so, Tony, I mean, from your experience, uh, what are the kind of the important roles that you see within our industry? And I'm very careful there because our, our industry is a broad yeah. industry. But what, what are the key roles that you see emerging? It's interesting. It changes very fast. So, so the, the key thing that we need to be prepared for is actually the change um, side of things and being resilient through change. Um, the E3 model generally, uh, as well as what is being taught within the computer science program, is specifically by design intended to equip people to be resilient in a very changing world. So um, I, I've been involved in E3 since its genesis, and it, it was originally a process where we were trying to imagine what the next 100 years of technology and engineering education at Trinity would look like. And then we partnered with our friends in natural sciences because we recognize that the biggest challenges can only be solved when we combine our powers. So when I look at the skills that as an employer are most important to me, it's people who are capable of working across their functional areas to develop an understanding of the problem they're trying to solve rather than saying, here's a load of technology, let's see what we can do with it, but rather really think about the outcomes and the, um, Programs within the, the master streams and, and the postgrad side of things um, in computer science at Trinity have always had that kind of focus. And I've been very lucky over the last few years to um, regularly be part of the judging panel uh, when it comes to the end of year poster sessions where the students showcase the work that they've done in their dissertations. And I'm always going to be and just what the students have achieved within uh, such a short period of time. And to Pragya's point, on top of all of the coursework and everything else that goes with completing a master's. So what makes the uh, graduates so employable, I guess, is that um, fearlessness when it comes to problem solving, that ability to project technology as a, a utility to solve things, uh, and then the ability, I guess, to, to showcase and demonstrate what's been achieved in that. Um, you know, for me as an employer, that's hugely important because I want people who are comfortable with ambiguity. Um, you know, I hire the best uh, that I can possibly get um, from a variety of institutions and, and across the world. And I'm looking for people who are, are not looking to apply, you know, a, a solution they've seen before to a problem that we're all comfortable with. I, I want people who can manage ambiguity. In our world, you know, we're, we're not trying to, uh, you know, save the world from that point of view, but we, we work with really, really difficult technical problems. So for us, scale is huge. So when we look at what that means from a technology point of view, we can only operate effectively as a business when we've got deep expertise around machine learning, when we have deep expertise around computer vision, when we have deep expertise around natural language processing, but also at scale. Uh, how do we design elegant solutions that actually can work at the kind of scale and response rates and so on that we need? So it's not necessarily uh, enough for you to be able to understand the, um, the lab solution to things, but you obviously need to, to understand how that solution operates um, when it gets into production. Um, and, and that kind of real world view of things, that uh, outcome view of things uh, is hugely important to me. And uh, you know, Trinity graduates across all of the disciplines for you know, four and a bit centuries, have not been intimidated by the scale of the problems that they've been solving. And 
as Rohan said, whether it's Hamilton and his Coturnians or, you know, interesting things that are happening in, in the biomedical uh, space at the moment or the startups and companies that have emerged from the computer science department um, over the years, you know, it's a very strong uh, industry track record as well as the academic excellence that um, everybody would expect from Trinity. Thanks, Ollie. You've actually covered several of the questions I wanted to ask there. Um, but the phrase that stuck me from what you said there is that comfort with ambiguity. Um, because I, I think very much, and again, going back to what Mario said, this, this is something that it's hard to draw out on a CV. But when you talk to any of our graduates very quickly, you see that you have people who are thinkers uh, and doers. Don't get me wrong. They know how to do. But they have developed this ability to look at a problem and not see the cookie cutter solution not think of it in terms of a set of libraries or a set of technology that must be applied. They're looking at it in terms of what's the fundamental challenge here and what's the best solution and then go out and seek the components that may or may not exist. Um, so, you know, it's, it's I think, a really powerful thing within Trinity and a very powerful thing with, within E3, um, you know, which is developing this combined view of different schools and different perspectives because the solutions that of the future are not going to be single disciplinary solutions. They come together when we bring together people like natural scientists and engineers and computer scientists who can think about problems from different perspectives. Uh, so Tony, thank, thanks very much for that. And if I were to have a short answer from you here, what, um, how attractive do you think Trinity graduates are? Now, obviously you're biased because you're a Trinity graduate yourself, <laughs> um, but, yes. but how, how attractive are they uh, for employers? Trinity has, a, has an immense international reputation so employers buy into the quality of what a Trinity graduate brings um, to begin with. Um, the real quality though when you, you actually get a chance to speak to a Trinity graduate is how they portray themselves and apply that knowledge and it's, it's what Kevin said or what Owen said there and you would have heard from Kevin and some of the people in the video earlier. Mm -hmm. You know Trinity is, is uh, steeped in intellectual curiosity and seeing the acquisition of knowledge as, as a tool to solve, um, you know, big problems. So you, as an employer, you can definitely find people who can code. And a lot of the skills that, you know, 20 years ago would have differentiated a technology graduate have in many ways become a commodity now. Um, and clearly, you know, if you're investing in yourself and your education by attending Trinity, you do not want to see yourself emerging from that as any other commodity resource. So um, the premium and the value add that you are getting from that is all of the um, problem solving, the comfort with ambiguity, the lack of intimidation when it comes to being presented with big problems and the ability to, to deal with whatever is put in front of you um, in an interdisciplinary way. Um, and Trinity, uh, you know, has that as a reputation, has that as a, as a prestige and a brand. But it's not something which is based on history. You know, it's a very current uh, okay. quality that the university projects. And, um, you know, as has been pointed out, the computer science department is independently ranked on, a, on an ongoing basis as one of the top computer science schools in the world. Uh, and that's because it evolves. You know, so the, um, the models of teaching, the model of programs that are out there, um, the skills that you are equipped with as a student and that you can then take with you as a graduate are constantly under review and development to make sure that, you know, the cutting edge is always where you will find Trinity's graduates. And that is why Trinity graduates are so um, sought after and valuable when it comes to an employment point of view. Thank you, Tony. So I'm going to return to Rohan now. And uh, Rohan, a uh, very exciting time for you at the moment. You, you set up your own company. Um, so, so that's fantastic to hear. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about that, please? Sure, sure. So I, I lead technology as a co-founder at a company called Sus Labs. Uh, the team is growing gradually and uh, we are 20 folks now on, on a mission to uh, inspire energy efficient lifestyle at homes. So uh, we have been working, uh, I along with my team have been working on it for a couple of years before the course. And as I mentioned, I realized there are certain knowledge and skill gaps that need to be bridged. Uh, so I took on the course and, you know, after at the end of the course, coming back and, you know, taking it to the next scale, I can gladly say that, you know, the, our product today, the hardware piece is now within more than 500 homes in India, over 10 cities, uh, and we have processed more than 1 billion data points. So uh, I'm happy to be recognized by the top names. Uh, so Google has recognized us as one of the top 10 startups in India with AI ML focus also recognized with the mission innovation uh, under the EU framework. 
as uh, one of the top solutions globally uh, impacting the 1.5 degree centigrade target for climate change and uh, uh, so uh, the 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 uh, contribution that trinity made in this journey uh, was that it appeared the entire aspiration so initially the thought was to at the thought was limited to country scale you know uh, be the best in india and now you know it is all about trying to hit the world so and be the global best so now we are looking beyond indian markets aspiring to enter uh, international markets as well uh, I, so, i love that I, mean, i love to hear the ambition um i, I and, but it's not just ambition it's backed up by your skills your capability and your drive uh, to produce something which i think is exceptionally important uh, where we live in a world that requires complex and thought out solutions to solve you know our our wicked problems that we face in many areas and and congratulations to you and your team for for addressing that and so i have one final question i'm going to return to pragya actually um so pragya for prospective students uh, hoping to come to to trinity um you know what would you say to them yeah so uh, first of all i would like to address some of the things that maril tony and rohan said uh, so as maril said it's your story you have to depict it the way you want to so about uh, opportunities and employment the employer usually sees you know what a uh, value you can bring to the company rather than what the company can do for you and that's what trinity seeks as well so i would uh, like to say the upcoming cohort that you should actually prepare your portfolio in a way that you present everything you want to be presented because it's a, not just a piece of paper you cannot uh, get to know the person uh, from a piece of paper if you don't present that well so i think uh, everyone uh, who is an aspirant should actually prepare a portfolio in which they uh, present the things that they do the things that they like and the things they want to do in future like uh, technology is a tool and especially if we uh, think about uh, programming it's uh, just a small part as tony said the requirements and the ambiguity of the problem is a bigger set of picture so we should actually uh, look around the bigger things first and then find out which tool is the best which can be used so that's how we should uh, deal with the things and uh, that's how i want the prospective students to deal with it first develop a good portfolio reach out to people if you need help seek help from your seniors uh, the course directors send an email don't you know don't just wait for opportunities to come and uh, don't delay things if you already have planned that you want to go this way like just start from the first step that you want to especially as rohan said uh, you know about being international so a simple example that comes into my mind is like if you are walking in your home only you will only cover like a thousand steps or maybe 3000 steps but if you step out of outside of your home you will actually cover a cover a few kilometers so that's the difference it makes come out of the box and actually start applying to the opportunities that you want to you know go forward to and uh, like the application process at trinity is quite simple like uh, cover uh, your portfolio the statement of purpose which actually defines what you want to uh, learn from trinity and why trinity afterwards uh, there are two a letter of recommendations and you can uh, easily ask any of your academic professors or maybe if you have some work experience you can ask those people to give you some letter of recommendations and apart from that it's a coding test which is timed for 20 minutes for data science strand and i guess it's 38 minutes for future network system strands and it has two to three coding questions so if you are able to uh, you know get it all done it's very easy and especially as an international you might also have to give a, an english language test and uh, it's also like um, very easy for people who have uh, actually did their un- undergraduate degrees in, in you know english taught courses so that's that's the major thing also i want to mention another point about uh, augmented reality and future network module strands so what i have seen in this batch and i think it was also there in senior batches that people don't usually choose this side of things like future network system augmented and virtual reality and as tony said that trinity looks forward to what next 100 years would come so what technology will you know boost up in next 100 years 
and that's what ar modules teaches us like uh, although i'm being a student from future network systems strand uh, just because of the choice of electives i am i am actually pursuing the ar module and it's something which is very new uh, maybe within the industry as well but as a course i think a uh, very less people teach this module to future network systems or you know other stand students not only the ar students so i think people should actually explore these kind of things they should be you know uh, actually researching about how to uh, decide what they want to do in the next few years and this question which people ask like what do you actually want to do in the next 5 years is not just a question it's a big thing you should actually think about it and then go around it so that's the uh, major things that i want to tell to the upcoming cohort and i think uh, mostly everyone has covered uh, all the major points on excellent pragya thank you very much i'd like to thank all of our panelists so rohan obviously pragya mario and tony for your contributions hopefully giving uh, people who attended this webinar a little bit of an insight into what they can expect uh, if they come to trinity college and how that is a propellant uh, for their career and for their next steps no matter what those next steps are uh, so we we want thinkers we want you know planners we want people with vision we want people who are ambitious and we want people who want to be part of a community uh, and we would love to see you you in trinity college some questions have come in on the q and a and and uh, in the the chat uh, i'm going to ask melanie now to give some information for where to go if you have further questions that we didn't have time to address today because obviously we only have 1 hour uh professor owen if you allow uh, i yeah. want to actually share a bit of uh, scholarship opportunities yeah. as well so uh, as rohan stated that uh, he was a global ex uh, gui ies scholar mm -hmm. a government of higher international education scholarship holder i uh, applied late so um, the deadline had passed already for gui yeah. ies but uh, there were some trinity colleges for global excellence post graduate scholarships so uh, the department funding is also very helpful for international students and they can apply that any time also after you know you pursue your masters degree there are not just industrial opportunities there are many phd opportunities as well so there is a d real program and adapt center program which give you fully funded phd opportunities because uh, trinity and especially ireland being an island they uh, they have education as one of the biggest resources so they spend a lot on education and they want people to actually become good researchers and bring up some new technology so if any of the aspirants are actually interested in coming to trinity they don't have to worry much about the opportunities and uh, directions available after the course because there are plenty and uh, employers as meril said employers reach out to you on linkedin and even on emails like uh, sometimes if you reach out to them first but uh, they do reach out to you because uh, if you present uh, your profile and uh, your story in your own words and in your own way they would look for the skill set that you have and you will have opportunities not just in ireland yeah. in uk and in other european countries plus if you apply outside of europe as well so that's the thing that uh, trinity provides perfect thank you pragya yeah. yeah i think it there are many opportunities of entry and there are many opportunities as people have completing or completing the program and where they may go so on screen you'll see a, a url here that will give uh, some details around uh, scholarships um to support people in attending uh, trinity college and and joining um the masters programs that we have available um mel do you do you have another slide you wish to show Oh, um, thank you, Owen, and thank you, Prakia. I think you've covered um, the scholarship slide very well. Um, I, I know today we have many of you have already applied to study with us and have received an offer. And so you may be still considering your options, but it's important uh, that I would like to highlight taking this opportunity to say that um, this year we have many exciting scholarship opportunities for both EU and non-EU students to, to consider uh, as long as you have secured an offer to study with us this September. So for detailed information, you go onto that web page and uh, it's played there that uh, you will see, find out information on apply and scholarship value. Um, so all those information will be provided through the link there. Um, so I encourage every one of you just to, to check uh, on that. Um, so, 
So I know um, many of you have questions for the school and for the E3 team that we haven't covered today, you know, especially in terms of admissions application process, um, entry requirements, accommodation, visa, and tuition fee payment, etc. And um, you're more than welcome to book a one on one appointment with my colleague Ellie, Nora and myself, and we'd be very delighted to speak with you at a time that suits you, just to address that any question you may have or any concern that you have, and we'll be very delighted to hear from you. And um, here you can see the email address and you alternatively, you can email us with your questions because I know some of the questions that you have submitted and um, that hasn't been answered, but we will get back to you. Um, so finally, my last word is I would like to sincerely thank all the panelists for your contribution and for sharing your insights, your brilliant experience and your expertise managing ambiguity. <laughs> That's just how interesting. So I'm really grateful for, you know, taking the time to share that with our, with our audience today. And also for, uh, I want to thank all the participants. This session is recorded and will be shared with everyone afterwards. Um, Owen, I don't know if you have anything else that you would like to say. No, I'll just uh, wrap up and say thank you very much to everyone for attending today. Again, thank you to the panelists for their expert insights. Uh, and hopefully you see that, that Trinity College is such an exciting place to study. And I really hope to meet many of the attendees uh, over the, the coming year or years uh, as they start to you know, take the next steps in their career and that that Trinity and, and the community we offer will become a core part of that. So thank you all.